Okay, class, today we're in section 9.2, extension. Graph quadratic functions in intercept form. 9.2, extension. Graph quadratic functions in intercept form. Go, graph quadratic functions in intercept form. Key vocabulary, intercept form. You have graphed quadratic functions written in standard form. Quadratic functions can also be written in intercept form, y equals a times x minus p times x minus q, where a cannot be zero. In this form, the x-intercepts of the graph can be easily determined. Key concept. Please read and get in your notes as soon as possible. Key concept. Graph of intercept form y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. Characteristics of the graph of y is equal to a times x minus p times x minus q. The x-intercepts are p and q. p and q. Notice how they have it p zero and q zero. x-intercepts. They're on the x-axis. The axis of symmetry is halfway between P and 0 and Q and 0. So P and 0, Q and 0, axis of symmetry is halfway. So the axis of symmetry then is going to be X is equal to P plus Q divided by 2. The parabola opens up if A is greater than 0 and opens downward if A is less than zero or if a is negative. So for the most part, you're going to apply the same concepts that you use in the previous section. Example one, graph a quadratic function in intercept form. Graph y is equal to a negative x plus one parentheses times x minus five. Solution, step one. Identify and plot the x-intercepts. Because p is equal to a negative 1 and q is equal to 5, the x-intercepts occurs at the point negative 1, 0 and 5, 0. Don't forget the x-intercept occurs when y is equal to 0. So basically all you're doing here is what we've done in previous sections. All you're doing is you're taking these two and you're setting them equal to 0. So x plus 1 is equal to 0 and x minus 5 is equal to 0. Then you solve for x, minus 1, minus 1. x equals a negative 1. That's the p version. So p is a negative 1. So that's like saying that's p. Right here is q. So plus 5, plus 5. So x is equal to a positive 5. That's where they got that 5 from. q is equal to 5. Okay, now a shortcut way to doing this is to simply look in the inside. What must x be in order for this function to go to zero? A negative one. Negative one plus one will give you zero. What must five be to make the entire function go to zero? Excuse me. What well, this what must this x be to make the entire function go to zero? A positive five. Five minus five is zero. Zero times that is zero, so the whole thing goes to zero. So that's all you're doing. Same thing we did back in um uh, chapter 8. Step 2. Find and draw the axis of symmetry. All right, so they told us that when we're working with equations in intercept form, we're going to use this equation for axis of symmetry. x is equal to p plus q divided by 2. p, q. p is a negative 1, q is 5. So negative 1 plus 5 divided by 2. A negative 1 plus 5 comes out to be 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So now we know our axis of symmetry. Our axis of symmetry is 2. Right? And we know it's going to open downward because our a value is negative. So, but first we make our axis of symmetry at, at x equals to 2. Step 3, find and plot the vertex. Find and plot the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 2, just like in the previous lesson. To find the y-coordinate of the vertex, substitute 2 for x and simplify. 
just like in the previous lesson. This is our original equation. So here we're going to put in 2 for x and 2 for x. So we get y is equal to a negative parentheses 2 plus 1, parentheses 2 minus 5. And that's equal to 9. So the vertex is 2, 9. So now we've got an x of symmetry. We plot our vertex. We plot our intercepts, negative 1, 0, 5, 0. We draw our U-shape, a smooth curve. And we just plotted our equation in intercept form. Now notice that the x-intercepts of the graph are also the zeros of the function. So that's that stuff I showed you in the beginning, where I let that set that equal to zero. So this is equal to zero, and that is equal to zero, and we end up with x is equal to negative one, or x is equal to negative five. Example two, graph a quadratic function. Graph y is equal to two x squared minus eight. Solution, step one. Rewrite the quadratic equation in intercept form. So this is our original equation. We look here, we're going to factor out a common factor. So we can factor out 2. When we factor the 2 out, we're left with 2 times x squared minus 4. Now, x squared minus 4, if you recall, is the difference of two squares. So now we have x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now we have it in intercept form. Step 2, identify and plot the x-intercepts. Because p is equal to a negative 2 and q is equal to 2, the x-intercepts occurs at negative 2, 0 and 2, 0. Don't forget, whatever it takes in here to make this go to 0. So here, for p, this x for p, um, x has to end up being a negative 2. A negative 2 plus 2 will give you 0. So that's negative 2. Here, x has to be a positive 2. That's your q value. So a positive 2 minus 2 will give you 0. Okay, so we plot those two on our graphs. Negative 2, 0, positive 2, 0. Also, don't forget, here, the A value is a positive 2. So it would have been a positive 2. We know it's going to open upward. And our vertex has to be the minimum. Okay, now we're going to find and draw the axis of symmetry. And then we're going to find the vertex. So axis of symmetry is x is equal to p plus q divided by 2. Well, negative 2 plus 2 divided by 2 is going to equal 0. So our axis of symmetry is going to be the y-axis, where x is equal to 0. Once again, we covered this on a previous um, lesson. Step 4, find and plot the vertex. The x-coordinate of the vertex is 0. The y-coordinate of the vertex then is y is equal to 2 times 0 squared minus 8. 2 times 0 squared minus 8. And that's going to equal to a negative 8. So the vertex then is 0, negative 8. So our vertex is right here is 0, negative 8. Draw a parabola through the vertex and the points where the x-coordinate uh, x-intercepts occur. All right, so once again, we got our three points. We got our axis of symmetry. We got our vertex. And we have both of the x-intercepts or the zeros of the equation. So we make a smooth curve and we are finished. Okay, let's get started on today's lesson. Thank you.